Good afternoon, dear friends. We are beginning this Mass of the Solemnity of the Birth of St. John the Baptist. In this Mass, we pray for all of you and pray for your families. But today, I'd like to offer this Mass for all those who have asked us to pray for them. Pray for those who have lost members of their families, especially family that lost their mother, that God may grant them comfort at this time and grant peace and rest to their mother. I also want to pray for Jerry Schoenfeld, who passed away a few days ago. Pray and ask that God may grant him forgiveness and mercy and rest, that God may bring healing and strength to his wife and children. I also pray for those who are sick. Pray for health and healing for those who are sick. Especially those whose sickness is not visible to the naked eye. That God who sees the pain and struggle and suffering of his children may help them find healing. Pray also for our healthcare workers. As they endanger and risk their lives every day, that God may protect them, that God may bless their ministry for healing. I'll invite you to bring all your intentions to God's altar and let us offer them together. Our opening hymn is Holy God, we praise thy name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy sceptre claim. All in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said. Israel, 
through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I have toiled in vain, and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord. My God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I'll make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, I praise you, I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you have probed me, and you know me. You know when I sit, and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth, I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A second reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king. Of him, God testified. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth, to have her child. She gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among you, among your relatives, who has this name. 
So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a, for a tablet and wrote, His name, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was open, his tongue free, and he spoke blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all his mothers were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Lord. My dear friends, I will reflect with you today from the readings as they speak to this person, John the Baptist, who prefigured the coming of Christ and spoke about or introduced Christ to the world. You realize that the whole life of John the Baptist, from the beginning to the end, was placed at the service of Jesus. So John, his birth, his birth, his mission, his entire ministry is all for the service of Christ and his church and his kingdom. So when John is conceived in his mother's womb, his birth was prefigured. An angel spoke to Zechariah and said, your wife will conceive and bear a son and told them what this son was going to be. Now, you and I may not have had the privilege of an angel appearing to our parents and giving us an identity and our mission from birth before we were born. But like John the Baptist, everyone, every child of God, born today, tomorrow, forever, is in the words of the song, fearfully, and wonderfully made everyone. Now, I, I know how we would have wished that our birth was prefigured, that God gave us terms of reference on how to live our lives, and he did. You want to know how God wants us to live? The scripture has all of that. So that is a template for how every one of us can answer God's call, the way John the Baptist did. Some of us would have wished we had like a small manual. This is for you, Philip. This is who you're going to be. This is how you can get there. Now we have all of that. It's in scripture. Jesus laid out all of that for us. And, and so today, as we celebrate the solemnity of John the Baptist, we, we must remember our own birth. I want you to remember your own birth. I'm sure the day you were born, your birth brought a lot of joy to your family. And why do you think that was the case? Because in you, your parents saw the future that they had always wanted. They saw someone who is going to outlive them, may be more successful than they are, may bring them the happiness that they always wanted. You had a mission and a vision. Your parents saw it. So maybe right now in your life, you are looking at yourself and thinking, as Isaiah thought, said, do I thought I had toiled in vain? For nothing uselessly spent my strength. How often do we think that way? We think, well, I'm just trying to be good for nothing. I can't see the benefits of being good. All right, so I must I'll change my values. I'll have to be contractual too. All right, you do good to me, I do good to you. If you do bad to me, I do bad to you. All right, sometimes we change, uh, we change our model. A good model that is healthy. A spiritual model that is healthy. 
only because we can't see the immediate benefits. We want to do things that will get us, if I have to lie to somebody or lie and defend somebody and support somebody, as long as I get some benefit right now, that's fine for me. You know what? Yeah, God knows I had to do that. So, so many of us are looking at our lives and thinking, wow, I have been doing good for all of my life. What benefits have I received? I must look at this person. They have been doing all kinds of things and every day they are being blessed. Their businesses, everything is working for them. That's exactly what Isaiah was thinking. It says, though I thought I had toiled in vain, it's impossible for you to work for the establishment of God's kingdom to put your life at the service of Christ and work in vain even if the benefits don't seem to be accruing for you in your own eyes right now. So the, the world might make, make you think right now that I, I have been in this faith for how many years? What have I received? All right, sometimes I pray and God doesn't even hear me. Sometimes I cry, I beg for something and God doesn't even answer. You may be tempted to give up your goal, your mission, and your dream, and putting your life and laying your life at the service of Christ. That would be the worst mistake you made. Go back. John the Baptist would never be heard. He was just a child of an unknown prophet. If John the Baptist had not laid his life in the service of Christ, he would never have a name. It's not only John the Baptist. If Joseph, the carpenter, had never put his life at the feet and the service of Christ, he would never be known. That carpenter in Nazareth would never have a name. If Peter, the apostle, a fisherman, did not lay his life at the feet of Christ and lay his life at the service of Christ, he would never be known. He would never have a name. Even Peter worried. He asked Jesus, what about us? We've left everything and followed you. What's our benefit? He was looking for immediate benefit. So if you are not getting, if you've not received the benefit for your service of God, for laying your life in the service of Christ, and you're asking this question, God, what are you going to do for me? What have you done for me? People might even be asking you, listen, you've been believing your entire life. What have you gained? Why? Because sometimes we're forced to calculate benefit only in terms of materials, material things. But the value, scripture says, he says, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with God. For now the Lord has spoken. Says that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him and I made glorious, I made glorious in the sight of God. So whether you have placed and done all of this, all of this and can't see the benefit. If you watch and keep being good and keep being faithful, trust that your recompense is with God and that your reward is with the God of heaven and earth. And I know he never fails. He will reward you and when he does reward you, what happens here? People were surprised. It says when immediately, no, um, And when and who all those who heard about this marveled, saying, What then would this child turn out to be? So when God has answered your prayer, people would marvel at that point. Wow. Because God is not going to give you what you have been asking for. God will give you far more than you ever asked for when the time comes for Him to bless you. But it's important for you. To put your life at the service of God. John said he must grow greater and must grow smaller. That means my life, net, the all, everything I do must be at the service of Christ. The question I want you to think about today in your life, at whose service is your life? At whose service are your thoughts? At whose service are your actions? At whose service are your words. That's something we must think about because our faith is defined by that. Just telling myself I'm a Christian isn't enough. I can console myself that I'm a Christian. But unless I lay my heart, my, my, 
My word, my thoughts, my words, and my actions are the service of Christ. Then, I am a Christian by name, not by my deeds. You are a Christian by name, not by your deeds. And so, let this, this, this feast of John the Baptist inspire you to reevaluate who you serve by what you do. If it's Christ, then it has to be about him, not about the benefit I get today. It has to be about the values he thought and represented and died for. As so always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. That God may help us, especially at this time where our faith is in a lot of challenge and trial. People are looking at us and thinking, wow, this one a Christian? No way. It is at this time that God is calling us to witness where Christ will be all things in our life, just so that others may see and glorify God. It is at this time more than any other. May God help us to truly be witnesses in the manner of John the Baptist, that we may prepare the path for Christ, our Lord, in this world. Let us pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was seen kind of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the Church of God on earth. Let us pray for our Pope, Pope Francis. Pray for bishops. Pray for priests. Pray for leaders of other, other denominations and world religions that we may understand our role in the world, our prophetic role to speak truth no matter what and to defend truth no matter what. That we may do what we have been called. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for parents that just as the birth of John the Baptist brought joy to his parents, that parents may reap the benefit of parenting and their children may find the blessings of God and grow up in the service of his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are still struggling to be pregnant or to have their own children, that through the intercession of St. John the Baptist, they too will be blessed with their own children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for families that are broken, for families that are in conflict, for families that have lost the common harmony, that John the Baptist, whose mission was to reconcile parents with their children, may intervene in these families and so overcome the divisions and the tensions and restore harmony and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose hearts are obsessed with material and temporal gains that we may recognize that our lives exceed far beyond anything material. In the words of St. Augustine, that we, we may remain restless until we lay our lives and our hearts in the service of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. Yeah. We want to pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. I pray for those who have lost their loved ones. I pray for those whose hearts are broken. I pray for those who are sick. 
not just physically, but sick spiritually, sick emotionally. Those whose lives are in real, those whose lives are in real crisis at this time. That the peace of Christ and His Spirit may visit with them and so bring them direction, guidance, and leadership. We pray to the Lord. God, hear our prayer. We pray for our doctors and our nurses and all those health workers who continually risk their lives for our sick, especially those who care for our coronavirus patients. Pray that God may protect them. Pray that their ministry may bring healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. God, hear our prayer. And for all of you who have brought your intentions and placed them on this altar, that from this altar your prayers may rise like incense to God's altar in heaven, that he may hear and bless those, those, those intentions. We pray to the Lord. God, hear yeah. our prayer. We end by asking our Blessed Mother's intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and they are for our death. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of the human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the lamp of redemption. And to make holy the flowing, the flowing waters, he baptized the very altar of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his own blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. In giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. So we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. Peace be with you. God bless you. And wherever you are joining us from, may God's peace rest and abide with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This moment of spiritual communion for all who are un still unable to participate and receive the body and blood of Christ, let us pray. Most merciful God, in your Son Jesus, you gave us the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. For all those who are still unable to participate physically, we ask that you, who are able to be anywhere and everywhere at the same time, may be with them. Minister to their hearts, to their souls, and to their spirits, O oh God. And they may have reap the full benefits of their faith in the Eucharist. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Having feasted on the banquet of heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinness of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the reins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. And I pray that God may bless you, that God may be with you, that God may daily reveal to you that your life has a purpose. It doesn't matter how you feel, that he did not just bring you here to be a number. Your life has a purpose. We pray that God may help you achieve what that purpose is, even if for the last one day of your life. So as I like to end everything I say and do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty. And I know God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Yeah. Through the prayers of St. John the Baptist, the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have an amazing day. We're going to sing... The song, O oh God, you set me and you know me. O oh God, you set me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I walk or lie down, you are before me. Ever the maker and keeper of my days. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. And with love everlasting you besiege me. In every moment, all oh, life ordered. You are.